गुड मॉर्निंग फराज सलामकुम सर गुड मॉर्निंग हरीश आवाज जा रही सलामकुम सर वाले सलाम खालिद साहब खैरियत है जी जी अलहमदिल्ला आवाज आ रही है जी सर आ रही है बस ठीक है गुड अजय मोंगा गुड मॉर्निंग हरीश गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग जी सर जी सर जी सर फराज साहब गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग सर सलाम सलाम सबको गुड मॉर्निंग जिसको मैं नहीं पहचान पा रहा हूं और जो स्क्रीन में नहीं दिख पा रहा है इसको गुड मॉर्निंग टू एवरीवन Good morning and assalamu alaikum to all my colleagues faculty members guests and our eminent speaker professor SM Akhtar sahab So firstly as we are settling down I'd request you all to turn off your microphones and I'll give a minute to do so Thank you. Now, now I'd like to hand over the mic to our chairman, Dr. Muhammad Khalid Hassan Sir, Saab, to introduce and invite our honourable speaker, Professor Akhtar Saab. Good morning, one and all, to present here. It's great pleasure for me to introduce our speaker, Professor S. M. Akhtar, who is going to talk on Indian independence and architectural expression. as a part of celebration of azadi ka amrit mahotsav the talk basically overviews the architectural expression in independent india in present context professor s m akhtar is a man of multidisciplinary backgrounds and his scope of studies spans over architecture town planning social science and environment he is first recipient of doctor of literature in public administration and he is the first architect and planner honored with delit degree akhtar saab was founder dean and professor at faculty of architecture and acoustics jamia millia islamia new delhi he served four consecutive terms as dean and during his tenure he developed six masters degree programs and phd program in the faculty which is serving the contemporary needs of the country as well as global society Professor Akhtar has been a consultant for the UNDP sponsored program capacity development of urban local bodies he was program co collaborator in UIA CI MES work program work program in 1999 on intermediate cities Professor Akhtar has designed several iconic projects including upcoming new mosque complex at Ayodhya without further ado i hand over the mic to you sir good morning khalid sahab and all the faculty members and the participant to the conference now as a part of uh, independence uh, amrit mahotsav it's a very important lecture and also it's a very complicated also but i will try to justify all the aspects because a long tenure of 75 years but to talk about architecture you have to go back 75 years more beyond that so that is from end of the 19th century to complete 20th century and part of 21st century so that is a long journey for architecture in india as i remember lot of perceptional 
things have been different for architecture at different times of only people were not able to appreciate what is architecture and when they were not appreciating the architecture as a whole they were not understanding the implications of architecture very shallow definitions of architecture were in use and they were also needed to be defined every time because architecture is moving through a lot of transition at a very fast pace no other discipline is moving with such a pace as the architecture has been if you take trek back up at the end of the 19th century yeah, architecture in india you start from the architecture education in india you will find a lot of engineering colleges were emerging up but only one architecture college came up at the end of the 19th century that was jj college and that was at, at the extension the importance is ki at that time architecture was believed to be an extension of fine arts so it was jj college of arts where the architecture started and subsequently in the, the beginning of the 20th century say around 1915 architecture courses were introduced at lucknow arts college baroda arts college lahore arts college so all these were perceptional that the architecture is something to do with the refinement of the fine arts so that was taken as a extension to fine arts and then the transit point the turning point came up in the architectural journey just after the independence of india when the iit khadakpur came in existence at that time it was thought architecture should be part of iit so this was the transition from fine arts to architecture but both the extremes are not true today architecture has got its own implication its own identity its own multidisciplinarity which is very unique and this thing was also realized at that time at the mid of the 20th century when the spa school of architecture and planning came up as a independent identity away from the fine arts away from the engineering and technology so this hunch has been always there where to place architecture so this is because of the nature of architecture which is multidisciplinary and it is moving at a very fast pace with the time time is changing so is architecture is changing at earlier time may you can go beyond beyond that that is the classical period when lot of refinement when the world when the churches were coming up palaces were coming up so architecture was patronized by the rulers take the taj mahal also so that was the architecture at that time serving the elites elites where the other person was generating the resource and somebody else was expending that and that was on the refinement of the taste expression in the architectural form vocabulary putting a lot of like literature and poetry and everything architecture was also a passion for the elites of the society to express themselves their thought their brains and service ministers through this expression of architecture but when it came in the industrial economy the things changed architecture moved from the classicalism serving to elites to serving to masses so this is a very unique transition of architecture which is reflected from serving to elites now you are serving to common man so this transition if you go further into it thought then you will find the eco architecture itself is primarily economy driven when the society had a different economy it was a different architecture when it changed it transformed to different thing when the money was dissipated to the common man the issue of architecture for masses came up then again the explanation of when the consumerism came in the my, my economy turned from industrial economy to consumer economy then the different ex- expression of architecture is there so if we track this expression of architecture throughout then we will find the architecture is not only something very material just expression in terms of drawings and putting up the concrete it's much more beyond that it amalgamates all the socio economics of the society and it is driven by the economy so these things are oftenly not perceived as a part of architecture it's a definition to say architecture is economy driven it's very fundamental but it is normally on surface it is not appreciated it is not understood 
that why architecture is transforming in such a manner. So as today we can see easily after 75 years of independence, we can see the changes every day occurring in architecture. So transformation in architecture is going on. So we can see the architectural transformation is in its vocabulary. Vocabulary means expression. So this was not thought earlier. The architecture has got its own vocabulary, its own language. But it was true. We came up from the stage where we will in a stage when architecture word itself was better understood as an adjective than as a noun. If you take, if they say architect of the modern education, architect of the India, architect of this and that, everywhere you understand architecture. When we say architecture, architect, it was not understood. So when we are referring to architect as a profession, so we are working on the architecture as a noun. And when we are appreciating others, the legions of the authorities, that you are the architect of the modern education, architect of the nation, architect of the country, architect of the science and technology, then that is a used as an adjective. So that word architecture was understood very well right from the centuries. That yes, architecture means something which is adjective, which is a creator, which is a conceiver, which is holistically planning it. So that may be much more than building and built spaces. But when you say the person who conceives and who develops the world spaces, then it was used as an architecture, architect as a profession. When you take architect as a profession, as a vocation, then it is the adjective, not the adjective. It is the activity. It is a noun that you are an architect, you are a doctor, you are a lawyer. So that is the perception which was not, mis which was not very well appreciated, not very well understood. It was appreciated a lot, but not understood with the implication it is having. So now when we talk about the architecture, the new definition, the old definition, the every definition has got, the architecture has been going through economic transformation. And that economic transformation is reflecting and it's changing vocabulary of architecture. So that is the word vocabulary is very important. That is how you express your conception. Fundamentally, we say the architecture can be deciphered in three terms, three C, that is conceptualization, conceiving the design, communicating with the team, which is working, which is patronizing, which is accepting it, and then con 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 converting into a concrete reality, into reality. So these three things complete. But in these three things, a lot of transformation is going on. With all these things, they always are serv servant or derivative of this dynamics of the society, dynamics of the time. So oftenly when we say architecture is a frozen music, it's not a frozen music, it's a signature. It gives the signature of its time on the screen of the time, on the civilization, how transformation, how socioeconomic dynamics has been changing in a particular time that can be reflected from the architecture. So that means architecture is much more beyond what, the, what we have been conceiving. Like at some one places, some places I said, architecture has got a soul. So I was questioned by a very eminent leader. Look, majority of the people could understand that. I have not seen the soul in architecture. <coughs> I said, when we conceive a building, we build a building, we design it, we always see there is a soul. The soul is the end satisfactory, the consideration of the end user. That itself is the same. And this next, the other aspect is, ki, I say ki architecture, if we talk about architecture, uh, the essential quality of architecture is not only its physical existence, but the vibration it carries, the way it defines the life, that is more important. So that vibration gives the architecture life, and that life is the soul. Further reduced to soul, Oftenly, we refer to architecture just in the physical form. That is a tangible aspect. But architecture has got much more role of intangibility, which is not seen, which is only can be appreciated, which can be felt only by your soul, but not observed by your eyes. So oftenly, people miss that. The intangibility in architecture is very important, which has not been discussed and which has not been much in debate also, intangibility in architecture. But there is no architecture which has having only tangibility. Every piece of architecture having 
intangibility and the tangibility so both the things of early have to be given the weightage as a consultant architect when you are working for a client to achieve the client satisfaction your first aspect first goal is to work on the intangibility with tangibility you cannot convince a pattern of your build, uh, conception of building of a architecture you client <coughs> you can convince yes when you are talking about the intangibility intangibility may have even cover the psychology of the pattern what he thinks what is his perception what he is expecting same architect is working for different two clients both expressions will be different because the architect will conceive not only the physical labor physical requirement may be same physical expression may be same but still if they are two two different pattern architect will chair will be different because if that is the intangibility of architecture the expression goes beyond that and when the same architect is working on a two different set of people he will give a different uh, version of architecture so that's why it is often said architecture can never be replicated all the our, our architecture is always created it's never replicated so replication is a common thing which can be physical but creation is something beyond that so architecture is always interlaced with the creation of something so that's why every piece of architecture on the surface of the earth the maybe our, our time frame or the surface of the, the spread spread of the land that is there but every expression is different physical parameters may not be so much to create so much millions and billions of designs conceptions but intangibility and the configuration the matrix of intangibility and tangibility that makes every building unique and that is the creation of architecture that's why architecture is never replicated another very common term you may have listened you may have come across building shapes you and you shape the buildings so if you explore this term building shape shapes you and you shape your buildings so this is the same feeling same concept that is talking about the intangibility of the building the social aspect of the building the psychological aspect of the building everything when it is covered so that is the, the human life which has got the most complexities in its built forms in its shells because if you take the fundamental needs of human life of civilization that is roti kapda bangal so roti is comparatively very simple agriculture produce has to be done scientific some research may go ahead but whatever is there that is much simpler and straight forward things that production is there similarly <coughs> clothing is also not that complex it's much simpler but when you come to third parameter that is makan roti kapda aur makan ya shelter so all the complexities of the human life all the disciplines of studies they are culminates in the creation of that build form so most widely what diverse aspects are covered by architecture itself that one term is defines that is architecture architecture doesn't mean only by a design in present context it may be by a qualified person who is architect who is registered with the council but in a wider context without with uh, losing the, the timelessness in timeless uh, scenario in the civilization whatever is conceived as a bit of i that is the creation of architect so architect express whatever is there that is the culmination of all the aspects consideration all the research all the thinking of the people or the discipline that is expressed in architecture that is the wideness of architecture that is to be understood and we all are doing that we are doing but at times we may not be knowing that what we are doing we are doing the same things all the parameters we are handling we are doing oftenly you will say ki architects architects basically they are the creator so oftenly we say the aapare person who is architect he has got other arts interest also other fine arts so creativity where the creativity is maybe poetry maybe painting maybe cooking maybe music maybe whatever is so they are also this get into one so that is the path where the architecture is so precisely coming back to your topic today that is very interesting aspect if you i can refer to it 
there was an architect in India who was known as Habib Rahman. He was the first architect of CPWD. He designed the Gandhi Memorial in Barakpur and many, many things. So I have done a book on him that was in 19, 2000, 2015. That was his centenary year. So <coughs> there I have said, written, the title of that book is Habib Rahman, the architect of independent India. So this is a very deliberate, well thought expression to acknowledge Habib Rahman's contribution. Because that was the, when we got the independence, the scenario was just we have get rid of the British rule. And lot of buildings expressions were coming up. And they were either the image of the colonial rule or of the Mughal rule. So combination of the Mughals and the architecture, the, the colonial expressions were coming even in the most prominent building of that time, you can see that expression. But when you see the buildings done by Habib Rahman, you find a different vocabulary. So that vocabulary, what he has coined, he has used, in, he has not used the arches, domes, minarets, which were being practiced at that time. Even in the number of Vidhan Sabha and parliamentary buildings, extension of the parliamentary buildings, that has been used. But he deliberately avoided using those. But whatever building he has designed, a lot of buildings, even the entire the ITO, Complex is designed by him. All the buildings, most of the buildings are there by him. So every building has got a different expression. So that's why I said he is the architecture the architect of the independent India. He coined a new vocabulary for the independent India. That this way the architecture has to be expressed in India. It has to be get rid of, liberated. It has to be liberated, not got the rid. It has to be liberated from the colonial images shadows and the Mughal images and shadows. So that expression came up. And if you track this further, this thought can, you can see, you know, much beyond in 1935 also, when Jamia was being under construction by bed, that time the Vice Chancellor Zakir Hussain Saab gave the dictate to architect, who was the Austrian Karl Heinz, that you must design a building which should not have the images, expressions of the colonial rule or of the Mughal rule. So that was the attempt. India got the liberation independence in 47, but attempt for liberation was going on. So this was also an attempt for liberating the country, expression, liberation of the expression, liberation of the thought process, that when you design a building, it has, should not have the images of the colonial rule or of the Mughal rule of the past days. So you have to, for architecture, you have to get rid of nostalgia. You have to move ahead. Architecture is for the present and for the future. It's not for the past. When you are not having sufficient thought for the present or for the future, then you may land up in exploring the past. Past is the foundation. But for after foundation, you have to grow up in the superstructure. So when you grow up in superstructure, that means the architecture is something which is living and which is vibrant. Whatever is not living, whatever is your past history, where the vibration is not there, vibration of life is not there, so that may not be architecture, that may be anything, maybe archaeology, but not the architecture. For architecture, it has to be living and vibrant. So when we say living, living and vibrant, vibrant means a lot of things that is going on around in the society as an individual, as a society, all are expressed, converged into your expression in the physical form. So when we come to the architecture, when architecture, may we, we do the expression, but expression is conceptualization, which carries on its back all the studies, all the dynamics of the society going on beyond and around us that is reflected in architecture. Pace may change. Pace is changing every day. Earlier, the pace may of the society may be expression may be changing in 100 years, maybe the 50 years, then 5, 10 years, then 20 years, 5 years. Now, architecture is moving so fast, it is changing day and night. In a 5 years time, if you leave the practice of 5 years, you will be out of practice. You will be not knowing the whatever, how they express the things. So, 
fast dynamics is there in the part of architecture that is today. And the challenge for the um, uh, academician especially who are teaching architecture to keep the pace with the dynamics of time. Keep the pace. To keep the pace, when you keep the pace, then you have to be, have a liberated mind. Liberated mind, with the liberated mind, you can exp explore the things and find out the new avenues. Just by copying, you can be copycat, but you cannot be an inventors. You cannot be creator. You have to be creator. For that, you have to have a different outlook towards the architecture. You must see the how the you express, how it is to be expressed. And the next generation has to be prepared for that, has to be liberated. The entire quest of independence of India was not the only independence, but the liberation also. Independence is just career, but ultimate virtue is liberation. Liberation of your mind. If your mind can be liberated, then you can do the thinking in the future also and in the present also. If you are not liberated, your mind is not liberated, your things will be off track. Today, the architecture, if we talk about architecture, architecture has to challenge the respond to the society, the challenges of the present times, not of the past. So present time challenges has to be met. We just cannot copy what has been done in the past. Like today, if we take the example of today, we are talking about the energy, energy, sustainability, conservation. Yes, that is important. But our predecessor, say I said Habib Rahman, he was also doing the same thing. But at that time, the conservation were, consideration was different. He was trying to get the natural light within the building. He was getting the natural breeze within the building. He was using a lot of lures to manage that. But now, the same challenge is there. Now we respond by putting the, harnessing the solar energy, by harnessing the wind energy, by energizing different resources are there. So the techniques have to be changed. Fundamental may be same that you may have. Yes, the issue was energy was that time also and this time also. But the solution which was offered by that time were different in that context. Now it is different. So we have to look for the solution which are in the present and which may be in the future also. But not in the past only. Past we can give, we can raise the problems. Yes, the problem was there. They have handled it. Academically, we can study that. We can appreciate. But from that, we have to cantilever out our new approach for the present times. So that is very important. There, there we need something which has to be very different. So now the result is we are coming to architecture. What is actually re required from architecture? What is the expression expectation from architecture? So architecture is the carrier for socio-economic transformation of the society. So for society to transfer to, to move ahead, you have to have a carrier which should be contemporary in a design and approach and in dynamics. So dynamics is the key word which is defined, which is reflected, which is responded by the architecture itself. Because society is not respect, uh, static. Architectural society or whatever society, the human society, the civilization, civilized society, everything. The society is basically dynamic. That is the crux. And when the society is dynamic, that means the architecture has to be very dynamic also. So dynamic means it should be dynamic in its expression, not only on the adaptation of the technology. That is one aspect. Responding to present challenges is one aspect. That be more is an aspect of the expression. How you express to the contemporary society, we should stand up in the present times and we should stand up for the future also. That is very important. Like similarly, we have been always thinking about the philosophy of architecture, teaching everywhere, or design, or the theory of design for architecture. But what is the theory of design? So what is the philosophy of architecture? Both these terms were very frequently used in academic world, but both have been miscarried. Philosophy of architecture, that doesn't mean philosophy of a particular architect or how he has expressed himself. Or philosophy which has prevailed at a particular time, that is not. Architecture is 
from the beginning of the civilization, it will remain for there till the end of the civilization. It has the vast canvas. Whole world is in an ambit. So we have to have a philosophy of architecture which should cover this timelessness and localization. It has to be global. It has to be universal. It has to be relevant for all times. So for that, we have to look for the architectural philosophy. What we are talking about as a philosophy of architecture, it's not the philosophy of so-and-so architect and so-and-so or for decorticism or uh, modernization or this modern movement, this movement, this. All these movements are just, they are there, 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 they are there but they are not carrying any meaning. Philosophy is something which architecture can have inherent in its expression. So as I try to explore the architectural philosophy, what is architectural philosophy? Then very first thing I realized that in architecture, from time immemorial and time to will come, which will come, no building, no architecture can be created without a place. Some place has to be there, some land mass has to be there, where it has to be glued. So this is from all the times, even from the Egyptian civilization till today. Every building has got its own place. And then period is very dynamic. So every building has to be placed in some particular time. It has created, so that is the second thing. Similarly, no building on the earth no architecture on the earth is without a purpose. So every time the purpose is there. So that is the another aspect. So if we take the matrix of all these variables, place, period, and uh, purpose, lot of things. So all these are the variables. And these variables, the variable varying value as all these five parameters, or four, four parameters are different. And that is the combination of this value which gives the architecture the expression of being a unique. All the four parameters cannot have the same value when you vary them to any extent. And these four parameters may carry a lot of things which are relevant. Yet when we take place, place means climatic conditions, geographical conditions. Availability of materials, availability of matter, everything is covered in that. When we say, um, say uh, period, so period means ki technology is there, which is dynamic and changing, what technology is adopted. So everything, every parameter is variable. And that variable is giving the evolution of architecture. So that's why every piece of architecture is unique. So that uniqueness has to be explored and thought that why whatever the architects are doing, that is unique. The uniqueness from where it will come. So that will be the appreciation of the dynamics and the matrix of these variables. They will give the expression of uniqueness for every piece of architecture. So a lot of things have been covered. Uh, meanwhile, I'm just uh, forget to tell one thing. You can note down your questions also. I'm very much agreeable to answer all your question and quest i will try to satisfy you also it should not be a monologue only from one sided it should be turned into a uh, both sided and dialogue so you prepare your question throughout and then we will come out and answer all the questions that will be another aspect that is very important also for architecture so now we are talking about the almost uh, um, every aspect is covered in architecture but still, we can add on a few things. If required, then we can and take up the question and answer. If the Khalil Sahib is agreeing, then we can either continue or we can switch over to question and answer session. No, it's up to you, sir. No, it's up to you. If you are, <laughs> it's fine. Otherwise, I can just continue. and uh, Or I, if the questions are already piled up, we can answer in between the question also now, right now and then respond to question and then continue that question. Okay, sir. Okay. You can take up the questions also, yeah. yeah. Asalaamu Alaikum, sir. Welcome. 
Yes, uh, you just uh, came up with the idea that architecture is for the present and the future. And <coughs> at the time of independence, we needed to come out from the uh, legacy of colonial and the Mughal rule. That was a uh, different aspect altogether. It was a particular situation for India. But uh, what we generally see is about any architectural building, there's a public perception and that is based on the history of a particular type of building. And there, our ethos and culture is inbuilt in the, into the architectural buildings. So how do we come up with this? Very interesting question. And a bit, uh, first thing is, uh, like I say, ki post independence era, when the architecture journalist country is started. So even if you skip the uh, yeah. past legacy, the change in the transformation of the governance and the objectives were different. Like before independence, we were not a democratic society. So everybody was not having a uh, authority to say anything or to claim any rights or to gain the equity of the distribution of our benefits. That was not there. But on the 47th the day we became an uh, independent country, so there was a lot of authority given to citizens of the country. They were in a position to question everything, contribute everywhere. That was not there before that. So when we said we got the independence, leave one aspect of uh, 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 British legacy. The other aspect was changing over from a feudal society to a democratic society. When you came to a democratic society, then the considerations were different. Like in, after independence, India has a limited economy, limited wealth. Parities were different. Public offices were created. And with minimum money, lot of offices were to be created. So what was there? The expression was having a very limitation. Yes, in this much money, how much we can build? And the agenda, top of the agenda was there. Like you take the example of UGC. UGC came up after the independence. Similarly, many offices came up after the independence. Most prominent is the Calcutta uh, new secretariat came up at that time in 41, 48, 49. And that time, you cannot conceive a high-rise building. In India, never thought about high-rise building. No knowledge was available. A high-rise building that two with a steel frame <coughs> was built at that time. So that was the expression and the ambition of the architect and, and the government also. Yes, we will go with the steel structure. A steel structure and a high-rise building in Calcutta, which is, is still working as a trade. So that was the independence impact of independent India. Similarly, when Nehru was there as a Prime Minister of India, he got the best architect available in India from the Calcutta to Delhi to do a lot of buildings. And in the first stage, when UGC and the, all these buildings were coming up, which were very essential, then in the second phase after he decayed, the Ravindra Bhavan came up with the, all the three academies. So first thing was, first priority kya thi, ki pehle apne basically needs ko meet karenge, pe secondary ko, pe tertiary ko. So second, Sangeet Nakar Academy came up, uh, 58, around 58. All the three academies were there. That gave the signature, the country, yes, this is the cultural ethos of the country. This is the signature of culture of the country. So that was written there in that. Similarly, when we moved ahead, that is a very interesting book. book if you take the uh, Habib Rahman, the architect of India, that travels all this building. Then the Delhi Zoo came up, which was the third on the priority. When all these essential needs were covered up, then the Delhi Zoo came up. And then the Urban Art Commission came up. And then we have a stop, a stop because then the next move was the Techno 72. When India gave the word, a thought that you are, yes, we are a developed country, we are developing, we are striving, technology is, we are importing, and Hall of Nations was built, which was a very unique build, <coughs> architectural expression. With that architectural expression, the thought was given to the global community, yes, we can do this. We are moving ahead. We are 
mastering the technology so these parameters these were not there prior to independence these all new ambitions came up after the independence and accordingly we designed our priorities architects as well and the society as well and everything so by putting the money in that sequence of priorities we build lot of thing and today we have reached to you know you can see where we have reached so this was all a journey of independence india when we are talking about the uh, independence uh, mahatsav amrit mahatsav we have to see this travel of 75 years of architectural journey that we started from where from the calcutta new secretariat and the gandhi memorial when the gandhi memorial came up at the barak pur in a record time so that was almost a impossible construction that was done by that time so that was the new challenge of the independent india that you have to deliver this memorial and if you still see after 75 years that memorial has got a very unique character architectural features structural things they all are a unique consideration in that so that came as a vision of the independent india so to that is the vocabulary of independent india the independent india may yes which you have believed that we can live only in jhopras but we can make high rise building in steel and we can make large cantilevers in barakpur and we can have a symbolism in architecture of that time so all these things which we have to see and appreciate just i, I said the history 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 may give you only the foundation of understanding the knowledge may be there but as architecture is not replication is not replicated you cannot stick yes i will give you another example like we say the old buildings of say 18th century or 19th century or early 20th century which is a brick construction that is sustainable for for, for 400 years 500 years and today we are making rcc structures which has got a life span of 60 years so we cannot but say we will go with the past we will do only the brick construction because land is limited width of uh, that much wall is not available that much time is not available in a building that you can you are having aiming to make a building in a lifetime now we are aiming to make a building in 4 years 5 year 1 year 2 years time so time has also changed materials have accordingly has changed so this compromise you may say, say call it but this is the reality that we will be going through different transformation even a building has having a limited life is not as long as 500 or 400 years as our previous buildings has to have they have got their own context so but now today we cannot do that if you say we may stick to history that means if take the inspiration from that yes this building was sustainable they could stand the earthquake and the pressure and this so we must continue with that rest can was not possible other parameters have to be taken in so when you take all the parameters in consideration to whatever is contemporary what is futuristic that you will do it you will not do whatever was there you may appreciate that but today you cannot do you cannot replicate building because you see with the time mix of time with the dissipation of the economy with the money available with the masses we have changed from the masses earlier only the kings were making now every masses is making so for every masses when the low cost housing is this is also one of the aspect of the architecture so you cannot say you make a building which have a 3 feet or 5 4 6 5 feet wall thickness so your space plot size is not even that much so that is much more than that so this is the notional value that you have to get rid of you have to be always reasonable and logical what you are doing what how you want to express just is taking to history may be fascinating may be nostalgic but nostalgia is not the way to move ahead to move ahead you have to get be more reasonable more logical and more practical also more open to whatever is happening and going beyond the reasons and logics understanding logics and reasons behind that then thought thinking of replicating anything because as fundamental architecture nothing can be replicated is can be only created next question for for puri for us yeah 
मुझे पूछना था अभी रिसेंटली रिसेंटली मैं यहाँ गया था एक अपना दिल्ली के एसपीए तो वहां पे एक स्किट चलाया इन लोगों ने तो उस स्किट में ऐसा दिखाया गया कि एक पानी पूरी वाला है तो वो सबको उसके टेस्ट के हिसाब से पानी पूरी दे रहा है उसके बाद फिर बाद में किसी करेक्टर से कहलाया कि हम आर्किटेक्ट तो पानी पूरी वाले ही हैं जो सब उस सबके सबको उसके टेस्ट के हिसाब से पानी पूरी दे रहे हैं तो मुझे खुद लगा कि मैं भी पानी पूरी वाला हूं क्योंकि मैं भी जनरली जो आपने कहा कि आर्किटेक्ट शुड कंसीडर द द क्लाइंट और उसकी जो थॉट्स है या उसके जो फिलोसफी uh, है या उसका एक्सप्रेशन है या उसकी अपनी पर्सनालिटी है उसके हिसाब से हमें डिजाइन करना है ऐसा मैं भी करता हूँ मैं ही मैं करता हूँ ऐसा just, तो just, मुझे बड़ा डेरा हेलो यस सर यस बोलिए आई वांटेड टू आस्क समथिंग रिलेटेड टू हिस्ट्री ऑफ आर्किटेक्चर एज टू व्हाट इज द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ टीचिंग हिस्ट्री ऑफ आर्किटेक्चर एंशिएंट इंडियन एंड इस्लामिक एंड ऑल दिस टू आवर स्टूडेंट्स एंड इफ एट ऑल इट इज अ पार्ट ऑफ कोर्स कैलिकुलम एंड वी हैव टू डू इट इन एनी केस देन व्हाट शुड बी द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ यू नो विद व्हाट क्राइटेरिया दिस सब्जेक्ट शुड बी हैंडल्ड सो दैट दे आर फ्रूटफुल फॉर देम Yes, very good question. Actually, in architecture academics also, there has been two schools uh, of thought, right from the Bauhaus movement onward. One school believed that history should not be taught in architecture, and one of the legendary authority in architecture, globally authority, he burned all the architectural history books in the architecture college when he was heading of college. So that is one aspect. Other colleges are having different variation. some are having two years three years one semester in history if logically we see we are moving through a transition yes it was a part of history of fine arts now it is a part of technology now it is something different which has got the history uh, fine arts also technology also and most important of the architecture is the social sciences and humanities which are oftenly neglected because if you ask an architect why building should be in your domain domain not in the domain of engineers engineers can do the beams and this is the column design they can design the shell also so why why to have building in the domain of architecture so oftenly you will not get any answer to it so instead of getting answer i will give you the straight answer the consideration of the end user is in architecture that is not in engineering as a architect we have to consider the satisfy the end user who are going to be use, use that building so that means the most important aspect of architecture is the study of human life human beings but oftenly in most of the architecture curricula we neglect that or we just take it as a cosmetic uh, cosmetically but we don't take it really but as i said architecture is economy driven sociology is a very important economy is very important so if we take all this because i said the, the tragedy with architecture is it for initially it was the extension of fine arts then it was believed to be extension of technology but it is neither the fine arts nor the engineering it is something which is very unique which has got a component some component for from fine arts from, from some from the uh, technology and some a major component from the social sciences this we oftenly neglect so if we study the social sciences then we study the end user human life human beings 
which are going to use collectively or singularly so if we study them normally we for a to be successful architect we do that may not be in the school curricula may have bung the social sciences humanities classes may have copied from somewhere else may have taken it as a boring but when we come to delving the architecture we always study all these aspects in person i have been always saying it class work is just one aspect other aspect is you have to study the human life wherever you are whatever you are doing but you keep analyzing and thinking about it you will be a good architect so that is the aspect of its history has got a may have a very limited use but initially when we were going through the transition actually architecture i said is moving very fast very fast transition but academically we become not so active in transforming the accepting the syllabus are not revised so frequently we are not putting up our mind we do it cosmetically the why what should be incorporated and what is to be deleted if we do that lot of things can be improved like loaded with the history 10 20 years 30 years back that was there to fill up your 5 years but now if you have to complete deliver a architect lot of things law is to be taught because otherwise the next day when you are practice you will be trapped in the law lot of management skill has to be taught to them so these are the contemporary now lot of movement is there in the infrastructure development you have to teach that now lot of structure construction techniques has also changed the books which were started being there for hundreds of years maybe mac and this all this they are irrelevant today now you have to work on the study in the construction details which are being taught in today and which will come tomorrow so you have to keep the pulse with you you have to study the market what is there what is material is going to change i said even after if you are not in practice for 5 years you will be out of context when i again repeatedly go to practice i came from the practice then i lost the control when i again entered i again took the help of my students to help me teach me the students were always a better teacher for me because they were having contemporary knowledge even today when i have been to the, after got the relief from the teaching assignment i went to the see lot of building and could find out lot of new materials which are being used today which have to be used and i was not aware i was not taught that more glaring example i i can tell you if you take the wood 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 joinery what we have been taught what we have been taught in wood joinery if we do it today we are guaranteed to fail because those joinries are out of date today they are not accepted and the joinery which is accepted today that was prohibited at that time you are not able to do that you are, you would fail if you apply that chip but things have changed but with the new inventions with the new research that has gone in it so architecture has to be open and emphasize on the research directly you may not be doing the research some research agency may be their production company may be there but whatever research they are doing you have to educate yourself yes this is the new possibility new availability new technique how it is to be done every day i, I come across lot of new details and i go to study this i even take the help of my students to teach me it's not the end of the world where i am the teacher and everybody is no new generation i i not get, getting the time to, to work so i have been um, side track if i want to keep, keep, keep the pace i have to learn with them study with them teach them ask them yes, they teach us lot of things so things are moving that way don't glue to history take whatever is relevant but you move ahead with the contemporary society what is the dynamics even the when you take the admission 5 years you spend in the college in the 5 years the professional world is different now the next change is even harish can tell you also the brother who are in practice now architects consultancy is gone architecture is no more master now it's pmc mm -hmm. and the pmc is again replaced by epmc mm -hmm. some different techniques are there is more a corporate practice different persons are doing delivering different aspect they are not doing architecture but everything but that is what architecture today which they are doing 
So total scenario is your voice is the uh, voice is going and coming. There is some problem with the internet, I think. Yeah. Yes, maybe. Maybe at your end or at the uh, college end. I don't know. Yes, sir, it is clear for us. So uh, Harish sir, can maybe some issue will be around the network. Oh, maybe. Maybe. So whatever is my submission is that you be open to reasons. Don't accept anything when you are. Most fundamental thing is that oh, I must tell you one thing, which is very common, which you may have been taught or may not have been. Up to twelve standards, it was studies, mugging up whatever is textbooks are they saying, whatever teacher is telling you, and replicating that. But when you come in the higher education, you are in the university level, then it is the learning process, or learning is always both ways. It's not one way. It's not lecturing. For learning, you have to apply your mind. You have to come out with a lot of question, and you have to corner your teachers. You answer this, sir. This is my quest. And till your quest is not answered, don't get satisfied. Don't get leave it. Chase it till the end. If someone is not taking answering to it, go to next. Go to next. Go to next. You must have your own question. The in the academically, in the studies has to be both sided. As I have said, I teach, take lot of lessons from the in my students, oftenly very informally. So that is the learning process is continuous and both sided. So you must stick to it. You just get out of the uh, secondary schools, come to higher education, and then start perception that way. And lot of good people are there to teach you, to guide you to to, to that end. So they take help them. At some time they may be related also, but again and again you can just pursue them to answer your questions. You will get your answer. Sir, वक्त तो आपका इजाजत दे तो एक सवाल मैं पूछूं। हाँ पूछो शिव सर। Sir, first of all, very enlightening talk, or I could not agree more. मैं आपका स्टूडेंट भी रहा हूँ, तो नेचुरल ही है शायद। मेरा आपने एक चीज कही थी कि 75 साल का एक हमारा जर्नी रहा सिंस इंडिपेंडेंस और उससे मैंने एक उससे मुतालिक एक सवाल है कि इन दिस जर्नी ऑफ 75 इयर्स इन सम एरियाज ऑफ आइकॉनिक या पब्लिक आर्किट आई में जो आर्किटेक्चर है उसमें तो इस जर्नी में सर हमने काफी ट्रैवल किया जहां पे पब्लिक आई है आर्किटेक्चर पे बट इन एवरी डे आर्किटेक्चर ऑफ मोहल्लाज इन कम्युनिटीज ऑफ स्मॉल पब्लिक बिल्डिंग्स लेसन ऑन पब्लिक बिल्डिंग्स हमने ऐसा लगता है शायद कोई फासला तय ही नहीं किया है कि वही जो हमारा आर्किटेक्चर स्टाइल और अप्रोच थी या लैक ऑफ स्टाइल अप्रोच वही आज तक के हैं तो इस पे आप सर कुछ रोशनी डाल सकते हैं कि वाई देर इज नो ट्रिकल डाउन इफेक्ट ऑफ द स्टॉलवर्ड्स के हबीब रहमान चाहे बीवी दोषी साहब हुए चाहे राजवाल साहब हुए उनके फिलोसफीज और उनके एक्सपीरियंसेज और अप्रोच का ट्रिकल डाउन इफेक्ट रोजमर्रा के आर्किटेक्चर में क्यों नहीं क्वेश्चन इज गुड योर हंस इज गुड but the answer is very complicated and it may offend some people also because uh, the first question and uh, uh, statement i made is architecture is economy driven so economy wealth has not been percolated as much to that section as much it should be there. and without economic improvement they cannot open up even their thought process so economic der- deprivation is very important we are a democratic society the benefit should percolate to the every citizen but there is a pace with which that is happening that has happened so in 75 years we have not been able to cover up that gap so that gap when we cover up like you take there are few very interesting questions also like population control some countries were saying yes by order you can reduce the population by dictate you can by dictate you can increase but the actual practical this molitution theory and the marx theory both have been almost demolished now the theory which is propagated is transitional theory transitional theory is when the economy will improve that means money is dissipated to lower road level then the population size will decrease when the money is deprived of that is collected that is not their economy is poor then the population will grow so that right. is the fact 
so same thing is we are we're not able to control the population also because the economy <laughs> of that class has not improved that much right. to come up in the main their parameters their agenda that detectives now the middle class or the upper class is having one or two child and that it takes is to make them their career but for the poorest of the poor if there is instead of one there are four child that means eight hands are there they can work earn and contribute to their family pool so that consideration is because of the economic deprivation the so economic is the factor for improvement of economy it's solvent is not going to make a stalwart can only destroy a movement right movement has to be from the masses so masses mm-hmm. will get the when they get, get the strength and inspiration then they will grow up and things will change then it is not there that that things have not changed even in the rural areas and the poor areas the living conditions have changed but there are a lot of aspects of there with a lot of criticism you can have but reality remains that things have improved a lot but expectations should be more that is natural also we have we expect more improvement in their life <coughs> whatever improvement has been there that is there they are not static they have also moved up with the time right expectation can be unless yes harish sir your question hari sir your question of is watch watching a watching a comedy or uh, sir 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 i had uh, self doubt uh, because uh, what we are teaching to our students i think uh, uh, there was one comment also in the section that narcissistic uh, 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 attitude of architects okay you have an style you have uh, you are great you are doing this you will do it for people like this only no you you demolish whoso, all that whoso no whosoever whosoever wants to take it let him take it otherwise you so that is what i am telling listen, in listen, that listen, in that is it listen, was ridiculed it was ridiculed listen, that listen, you are like you are like <laughs> listen listen to harish what i am saying what you are saying that is there but you have to see it beyond that like when i started in academics i switched over from consultancy to academics first thing i said ki at that time it was fashion in the architecture in all the old colleges ki students and architects were touch architects are just next to brahma brahma is the creator of the srishti and you are the creator of built environment so you are just next to him so first mm-hmm. thing i said you this is a misconception demolish it you are not a brahma mm-hmm. the, you are just one entity of the whole system whole jo system hai uska just ek part hai you are playing one role that's all everything is not in your hand you don't believe to be a brahma that is a misconception given to most of the architects just you are part of the society you have to play your role properly and architecture profession itself as i said architecture is economy driven so when it is economy driven nice to write money the money for creation is not with the architect money is with the client conception is with you so now you have to come to a synergy where your brain and his wealth is being put to use so some compromise he will take make some compromise you will make and you will come come out to a common ground neither he will be correct nor you will be correct but something which will be come out will be correct or your partnership will break you will lose that client or he will use the architect so if that confrontation is there if some compromise is achieved in the thought process in the expression some mid path is like when i was practicing i, I analyzed i designed two 10 arch- buildings out of 10 buildings two will come only the way i conceived it two will be destroyed at the end of the year when the ego of the client will come up yeah sab aapki ki chalegi meri nahi chalegi i will do this okay destroyed and sixth building will be not on the track i will call you later six will buildings will be not on the track right from the day one but hmm. since you have to earn the money you have to run the establishment you have to op- run the office 
you will take that six also. So whether you are selling pot puri chat or whatever you are doing, that is the consumer market. That is the things are moving at. So you cannot live in a, any utopia. Utopia is something which is cannot be uh, achieved. And at times, architect may think that he is the perfect. He is the right. At times, he may be wrong also. Client may be correct also. Because whatever he is considering, you may not be considering. So considerations are the very important. Perceptions are built on the consideration. So you don't need to panic about what you have seen there and what you are doing. Whatever you are doing, that is perfect. And another aspect which is very... Now some things, whatever these... Who is the presenter, the writer, or the thinker, or the, they, everybody has got its own mindset. Somebody is now enjoying and criticizing everything. Everything is wrong. Government is wrong. You are wrong. We are wrong. That is wrong. So that set, gives them the satisfaction. Someone may be have a perception in Jaisa Kaitengi, Hardun Mengi Nikalna. So, go problem karna. So, that is the psychology or the thinking of that person who conceived that a skit will be there. So, that may be negative also. That may not be practical also. That may be hypothetical also. He may be living in some fantasy land that he may express that. Realities may be different. So reality is the way hai, jo whatever is moving ahead. That is real. The reality is that Harish Tripathi is a practicing successful architect. He is moving ahead. The direction you are moving ahead, that is okay. Reality is architectural practice is having turbulence. It has always gone through the turbulence. Peak aati hai, decline aati hai, pike aati, decline aati hai. Change in transformation hota hai. As individualistic practice thi, ab wo corporate practice hodi ja rahi hai. So these changes have to occur. And you have to endure yourself with those changes or get out of it. But it's a very vast canvas. A lot of practices are there. It's still a lot of survival spaces are there, niches are there, where the individual architects can survive. But most of the architects are today switching over for, it to, for considering the growth. They are switching over to corporate practices. So that is also their revenue. So everybody, <coughs> everybody has got his own thought process and decision making when virtues. So you cannot expect that you are the superior. You can only be the right person. Everybody is right. Everybody is wrong. So you should be accommodative. You should be logical. That is more important. Logic yeah. is not where it is not suiting. You just skip out it. Get out of it. I'm not interested. And are, are you accepted? Because everybody, sure. every individual has got its own thought process, its own egos, his own perception, his own dictations. Whether you accept it or reject it, it's up to you. But don't get frustrated. Things are open, be logical and sort it out. perception cartoon positive or negative आज भी आप देखिए आज भी न्यूज़पेपर देखिए तमाम चीजें होंगे क्रिटिसिज्म भी होंगे तमाम पॉजिटिव होंगे नेगेटिव होंगे तो यू टेक व्हाटएवर यू लाइक इट यू रिजेक्ट व्हाटएवर यू डोंट लाइक इट डोंट गेट पैनिक्ड अबाउट इट थैंक यू सर थैंक यू क्वेश्चन सर सर वी हैव सम क्वेश्चंस फ्रॉम स्टूडेंट साइड्स एज़ वेल दे आर श्योर गो अहेड नो प्रॉब्लम दे आर मोस्ट वेल अस्सलाम वालेकुम सर सर लाइक यू हैव राइटली सेड इन योर सेशन दैट आर्किटेक्चर इज नेवर रेप्लिकेटेड it is always created but we also came across some challenges like uh, in which we have to uh, design something that uh, act as a barrier between the past and the future means the print of history to the future so what could be the design approach for these type of challenges thank you design approach so there is only one design approach for everything one design approach is the reasons and logics and if reasons and logics are not convincing you, then that is the other situation. You can work it out. It's not that always you are at fault. There may be communication, there may be perceptual changes, there may be perceptual gaps also. You don't get bogged down with whatever is there. Only thing is you must emphasize on your reasons and your thought process, your mental strength. You enhance that. 
and before accepting any tech you should reason it out as i said learning is a both way process you have to participate you have to question it they may answer you they may not answer you but you put the question and your question is the guiding force for you that is the quest quest must without quest nothing can be there so that is not the issue the you are the question is the prototype the what is to be solution solution is to be given by you you have to put your mind but to give the solution you have to have a reason logics and actually there is a lot of learning processes is going on when you are a student there are lot of things which are being taught to you as a learning process that may fall wrong also that may fall right as right if you take the fundamentals of dialectics first thing is one thesis is evolved then there is a counter thesis antithesis then there is a confrontation between thesis and the antithesis and then the synthesis is evolved and that synthesis becomes a thesis so whatever exercise you are doing this is not the perfection this is one of the thesis there will be a counter antithesis and then it will be demolished and then there will be thesis so you be open to it you don't care take it to uh, yourself yes manasi you are raising your hand Put on yeah. your mic. Uh, yeah. Huh. Good morning. Good good morning. Good noon, sir. Thank you so much for the lovely um, conversation you are having. It's always pleasure to listen to you. Um, I I had actually put the question in the chat box. I'm I'm going to read it out. There are more questions in the chat box for the organizers. My question to you is um, basically how to make the profession, architectural profession, more open to critical appraisal. and this has to come from teaching itself because whenever we are teaching architectural journalism and architectural criticism uh, we are we are ending up uh, doing appraisals and not really taking it more critical uh, way of looking at architecture so to be to be precise how can we be more neutral about looking at projects to make the profession more accountable uh, in, in, to the society as you have been saying time and again that we we are at a we are at the service of humanity and it's not really something which we should be practicing as nostalgic or narcissistic approach and uh, i i will uh, be very keen to hear your views i know we have some alignment in thought process so i'm very keen but before that just just let me announce that i actually had a detailed conversation with sm akhtar sir on ayodhya mosque and it's a published book for all of you to really look at it i have put the link in the chat box uh, please go through you will really enjoy the conversation with him and it's a detailed uh, and it's a book with uh, many uh, links where you can buy it thank you so much over to you sir yes so actually uh, what i would say as a architect you do your job put your reasons and logics and let others do whatever their job is critics article architectural criticism or journalism they may be associated with us they are the separate entity so either we switch out over or we keep performing and the reality of the society is the performers are always at the receiving end and critics are always at the threshing end so that is that should not uh, trouble you you do whatever your job is and let the them do their jobs so there is no problem if criticism is there if everything is going as it is there again you see there may be two aspect one thing is he may not be understanding what you are saying want to say so he may be having a perception which is not distorted accordingly the reactions may be there my conceptions are clear my perceptions are clear and whatever the parameters i have that parameters also are not with him there is maybe lot of parameters which may be guiding you which may be binding you which is not there for the critic or the for the journalist so journalist and critic has have that a different consideration so for that consideration you cannot go down you cannot think about it you cannot just dilute your perception you must have your own personality your own vision your own expression just of course everyone should have its own expression and vision but the thing is ki it should be logically defendable basic thing is reasons and logics are the crux for everything so whatever whether it is architectural design or criticism or whatever is if something has to be criticized it has to be criticized given the reason 
if you are do, doing a design, you should be happy with it. I quote you a very, very interesting example. A plus D was a very leader magazine. They were coming out with the issue on sustainability. So when they asked me to write about the sustainability, what I read, they published that. So that was absolutely in contradiction to whatever the others authors have literally written. Every thought was demolished. All were selected, asked, invited to write on that sustainability. But their sustainability approach was different. My approach was different. So they were most of the time, they were going out with the fashion, with the vogue, with the thought. Everything was there to write whatever is being selling today. Like if you talk about sustainability, lot of people are there in architects also. They will say sustainable architecture. But people like me will say there is nothing like sustainable architecture. It's not an add-on chart that you have sprinkled on Every architecture has to be sustainable. If it is not sustainable, then it is not architecture. So architecture and sustainability is maybe fashion, but it is wrong. It is not perception. Even the people who are running the courses of masters in architect, sustainable architecture, so they are also, I have criticized, my friends are there. But that is the administrative requirement. They said, okay, go ahead, do it. I will support you. But the term is not correct. I don't agree. Sustainable architecture, whatever is not sustainable, that is not architecture. So there is two thought clear that architecture plus design, architecture plus sustainability, and architecture and sustainability inherent. Architecture is equal into inherent sustainability. So both the approaches are there. <coughs> when you land up in their domain, they will box you down. When you are in the other domain, they will appreciate you. So actually, there was a time when people were not even able to ready to listen that sustainable is the inherent in the architecture. So because that was fashion. So that time you have to keep low. Yes, okay, sir. Kuch nahi bolenge hum. Lekin jab time aayega tab to bolenge hi. Ye stupid question tha aapne jo kiya hai. Architecture mein sustainability to inherent honi chahiye. Nahi hai to hai nahi. So that is the perception. That is the criticism and, and, and rightism. Everything is there. Everything has got a perception. So perception, actually perception is very undervalued word. This has not been used. But I have used this word very diligently as a title of my book. Islamic architecture perceptions and paradoxes. So perceptions kuch aap leke ghoom rahe ho. Realities kuch hain. So har shiiz mein perception baut relevant hota hai. Ki aadmi perception kya leke jad. Aaj sustainability ki aaj bhi hum baat kar le. <coughs> energy ki perception ki baat karte hai sustainability. Sab se, humare hi sahab se, the crux of the sustainability is economic sustainability and the social sustainability. That they are not doing. They are not talking. Only energy. Energy efficiency with low masters bhi kar rahe, PhD bhi kar rahe. Ki sahab, humne candescent lata khada ke, or LED laga diya, or isse itni power bacha li, to is stupid hai. But you market ba available, like consumer na khid laya laga liya usne. Aap usme kya research kar rahe ho? Research to usne kya hai, jisne woh chize, devices aapko invent kar ke de di hai. तो उसको तो नाम जानते नहीं हम हम क्रेडिट लेते हैं कि हमने आपने हमने ये एनालाइज कर दिया कि आपने इतनी एनर्जी बचा ली है तो दैट इज सेलिंग इट इज सेल बट बेसिक थिंग इज कि अंडरस्टैंडिंग व्हाट वेयर देयर वी स्टैंड तो दैट अंडरस्टैंडिंग इज कमिंग विद योर रीजंस एंड लॉजिक्स तो रीजंस एंड लॉजिक सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट क्रक्स है और दूसरी बात ये है जो सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट है जो सोसाइटी पूरी मूव करती है और जब से सिविलाइजेशन हुई है और जब से आज तक डायनेमिक्स ऑफ सोसाइटी इज ड्रिवन बाय द इकोनॉमिक्स तो इकोनॉमिक्स के बिना कुछ होता नहीं है तो इकोनॉमी जहां पे है चाहे हरीश का क्लाइंट के पास इकोनॉमी हो चाहे चाट वाले के पास इकोनॉमी हो करना आपको वही पड़ेगा जहां पे पैसा आपको लेना है Sir, sir, a quick question uh, uh, um, uh, related to uh, this, because when we when we talk about doing the profession, uh, we often uh, land up into uh, the sustainability thing in uh, both environment and energy. And you are rightly mentioning that it should be social and economic. But don't you think uh, as a profession, uh, we have really gone too far into looking at uh, the economic side of it and really left behind the social and the environment side of uh, the sustainability? Actually, all the three are equally important. Yes. Society, environment and economy. Without them, there can be nothing possible. 
because uh, openly I have been teaching one uh, theory that is the prismatic theory. If you take the prism with the three phases, one is social, other is economic, and third is the political phase. And the median of that triangle, that prism, that is the economy. So economy is the engine for the dynamics of development. And all these three, social, economic, and political, they must guide it. So social, when we talk about social, social, social also comes with, with the environment also. Environment ecology can be all covered in that social. And economy is in the crux. The median is economy. The movement is with the economy. But the guidance to move that movement, the shaping of the design of that is coming from the social, economic, and political frame. That is there. Thank you so much, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. It was a great Q&A session. Now I request Dr. Sharmin Khan Saiba to deliver the vote of thanks. Thank you. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, you are audible. Yeah. Uh, dear Professor Esther Akhtar Saab, our Chairman Dr. Khalid Hassan, most valued online and offline students and participants, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum and a very good afternoon to all of you. It is my privilege to have been asked to propose a word of thanks on this auspicious occasion when we are celebrating Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. Words are not enough to thank Professor Asim Akhtar for sharing his views and in enlightening us with his words of guidance through this memorable talk. Sir, your dynamic personality could be sensed in this lecture also. Myself, on behalf of Department of Architecture, ZHCET, AMU Aligarh, the entire management team, or let me call it the entire fraternity of architecture present here together, we extend a very hearty vote of thanks to you for sharing with us the vision of Indian independence in architectural expression. It was indeed an interesting and thought-provoking lecture. I'm sure there must be some many, uh, many more questions yet to be answered in the box, but because of shortage of time, we cannot handle them all. Uh, so thank you, sir. We are all very much inspired by your words. I'm also thankful to our chairman, Dr. Khalid Hassan, who has always been standing with us and motivating us to take up new endeavors and make them a reality. I thank him also for making this event a successful one. And even if this dimension cannot happen overnight, the wheels start rolling days and months in advance. We have been fortunate enough to be backed by a team of motivated and de dedicated faculty members and students. I'm especially thankful to Mr. Faraz Farooq, who has been the coordinator for this event, for making this event possible in hybrid mode through his technical expertise and endless efforts. And he made this uh, possible despite of all constraints and made it a success. I hope this event is going to open new windows for future possibilities. I cannot thank everyone enough for the involvement they have shown and the willingness they have expressed to take on the completion of tasks beyond their comfort zones. I thank all the students who have been here working voluntarily and helping this uh, to make this event a great success. So I'm also thankful to all the students present in online and offline mode. Last but not the least, I'm also grateful to the non-teaching staff members who are always willing to support us in the best possible way. I conclude here with the hope that endings are new beginnings and same shall be true for us as well. And if time is money, then we have spent millions of us, millions of us have spent it today. Thank you all for making this event a success and have a great day and happy Eid celebrations. Thank you. Thank you to everybody. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Wonderful talk, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Great talk, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It's always a pleasure to hear you. And thank every you. Thank time, you yeah, and every time it brings something new dimension to it. It has always been a pleasure to be a part with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.